It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. We look at uh, Chanigals and uh, the Super Four Cons. Uh, Monday, Thomas joins the conversation. Now, for Chanigals, you have Ghana beating Nigeria again. Uh, we're talking about the Black Gallus' 2-0 uh, win right there. Uh, and also, the Super Falcons of Nigeria have actually left the shores of the country. They left on Wednesday for the United States, ahead of the doubleheader friendly games against the United States women's national team. Having both secured their places in the next year, FIFA Women's World Cup build for Australia and New Zealand, uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will actually encounter uh, their counterpart, that's the United States women's national team, and will clash twice this December. This September, I beg your pardon, in preparatory game towards the World Cup. Now, the first of the clash will take place on Saturday, September the 3rd. That's tomorrow at the Children's Messy Park in Kansas City. And the second clash is scheduled for the Audi Field in Washington, D.C. That's on Tuesday the 6th of September 2022. Like I mentioned earlier on, uh, Monday Thomas joins the conversation. He's a sports journalist. Monday Thomas, many thanks for joining us on a Friday morning. Good morning, Mercy. I'm uh, quite excited to be here to talk Nigerian football. And uh, let's begin from the Chan Eagles, or like they say, ladies first. So we should begin from the... No, no, no. Balkans. Let's start with the Chan Eagles. The Chan Eagles, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's happened already. And we're going to have the game happen later on today. So the Chan Eagles should take the lead. All right, the Chan Eagles, uh, it's going to be a mountain for Salisu Yusuf boys to climb. Because personally, I feel that they should have nipped it in the butt in the first leg by at least getting a draw in that particular game or at least scoring an away goal in that game. We know in African football, uh, the away goal rule certainly counts. And uh, that's the away goal rule that the, the Black Stars of Ghana used to beat Nigeria out of the World Cup playoffs. So losing 2-0 in Cape Coast, it's certainly going to be a very difficult tax, a very peculiar tax for uh, the Super Eagles B to get three goals past uh, the Black Galaxies of Ghana. Why am I saying so? Because football is a game of numbers. Uh, football is a game of stats. When you, when you want to take a look at your opponent, when you want to go against your opponent, you need to take a look at the stats. How well have you been playing against this side? Nigeria, the Super Eagles B, have never beaten the Black Galaxies of Ghana in a champ competition. They've played three times, they've lost twice, and they've drawn just once. So what are the chances? that the Super Eagles B will not just win the Super uh, the Black Galaxies, but they will score three goals because they have to score three on reply goals if they want to book, book that ticket to Algeria 2023 Chan uh, Tournament. They have to score three on reply goals against the Black Galaxies of Ghana. And I watched that game in uh, Cape Coast, although I wasn't privileged to be there. I saw it on the screens. The Super Eagles B were not playing as if, uh, like, they, they want something out of this game. They came around with a negative mindset to just maybe uh, get a draw out of this game. But in the, in the first 45 minutes, they were able to play nil-nil draw. In the second 45 minutes, things did not go according to plan. And they seems to be bereaved of ideas. They didn't know what to do. The Black Galaxies of Ghana got two opportunities, and they made it count. So that's bygones, by the way. We should be focused on what we are going to be seeing here to, uh, tomorrow right there in Abuja, but I doubt that the Super Eagles B can score three on reply goals against the Black Galaxies of Ghana. So we should just temper our expectations so that we won't get to be hurt when we see the final result. Because personally, to be very, very fair, to be brutally honest, I'm a patriotic Nigerian, but I don't think Nigeria can uh, qualify to the Chan 2023 Let's talk about uh, tournament the in Algeria. We can qualify, you know, for that game. I mean, we saw the first leg 2-0 right there, and Ghana actually hitting us very hard. I remember a colleague who actually prompted me to that loss. It was really saddening and very patriotic. I want my country to win every other time. But that's the case now. A second leg, a first leg has happened, second leg anticipating to happen tomorrow. Uh, what exactly did we do wrong in the first leg and what do you think we can do right? Do you think we even have the space and time, you know, to get it right? 3-0 like you have uh, mentioned. All right, first off, I'd I like to just reiterate, I'm very sure a lot of people know that football is a game of uh, mentality. I, I told you that in the first leg, our mentality was a little bit negative. We just wanted to go there and get a draw, which would have been a good result. But in the football, the best way to get a good result is to attack. The best way to win a game 
the best way to even defend is by attacking. So for Nigeria to get three goals in this game tomorrow, which is impossible for me, but of course, football, we all we get to see unexpected happen sometimes. So for them to get the, the best result tomorrow, they need to change their mentality. They need to have it in the back of the mind that they are better than this Black Stars of Ghana. I mean, if you want to compare the NPFL to the Ghana, uh, the Ghana Premiership, many people would say that the Ghana Premiership is better. So it now boils down to what we've been doing here in the, in the league. Have we been getting it right? So it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot. And if we've not been getting it right in the league, so we can't just get it right in just one game. So we just have to change our mentality and hope, and uh, we just have to hope that things go according to plan when we get to play the Black Galaxies of Ghana tomorrow. But like I said, temporary expectations. Uh, I've, I've read out the stats, and I've never beaten the Black Galaxies of Ghana. And what are the chances for us to score all three on reply goals? It's actually very slim. But all the best for the Super Eagles B, but I don't see them progressing to the Cup of Nations. But, but I remember that when we had this conversation for the uh, Super Eagles B, uh, you were very positive at some point. I mean... Uh, yes, I was. Especially when we mentioned the likes of Anazi and Youssef, if we look at the lineup, uh, the makeup for the game, we had some experienced player in the team. You mentioned that. And so what happens to uh, having experienced player in the team and not even uh, trying to win for the first leg because the second leg is almost impossible to have three straight goals without uh, equalizing on, from the other side. Well, I said so. Basically, I was happy about the score. The likes of Andy Okwe, who wasn't allowed to play that first leg game. Hopefully, he will feature in the second leg. I talked about Nasi, him uh, being included in the trading, and that it's going to help boost the confidence of the young stars. I was happy about the starting lineup. But what I saw on the pitch of playing Kepkos, I just had to come to a conclusion that if we continue playing like, like this, we can't get the needed results. Okay, so uh, it's time to, you know, talk about the ladies now. The Super Falcons have actually arrived at the United States and they're ready for that doubleheader friendly uh, with the United, uh, United States, uh, the, the counterparts. And, and we know that the United States, in every other game, uh, they seem to be, you know, leading the charts. I mean, they're a very strong contender. Do you think that we stand a chance well, this game actually is not the value of it is not in the result. I don't think it's in the result. No, but, but let's it's talk at the, let, let's look at the performance so far because most times, uh, if you look at some of the games, the performance always almost determine what happens. You know, in the actual game, is a friendly. We understand, but but looking at the friendly now because there's always an adage. I think I've said this adage when you're around. It is how you sleep that you measure how you die. I mean, when someone's sleeping, that's how you know when the person is dead. It's just easy to use that to measure. Well, football, so with the friendly, uh, come on, come on, Monday. <laughs> but, but do you think that we stand a chance, I mean, looking at the lineup now and looking at, you know, the quality of players, uh, the combination technically and all of that, do you think we stand a chance to win the friendly? And does that give us even hope as we get into playing the actual game? All right, judging from the just concluded women's Cup of Nations in uh, Morocco, I think Nigeria stand a great chance. We played beautifully well. I wouldn't say that the competition or that tournament was disappointing. You saw how we struggled in the uh, uh, semifinals against Morocco when we actually scored after being a woman down or a man down. We went ahead to score against Morocco. But, of course, football happened to us that we didn't just get one red card. We got two red cards in that game. So it was certainly a very difficult game. So if not for that red card, I think the Super Falcons would have won the Women's Cup of Nations. And we would have been uh, the best team from Africa, of course, going to the FIFA Women's Senior World Cup uh, that will be hosted next year in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And now to the game. You ask the question, do we stand a chance? Yes, we do. We've got brilliant players. I'm not I'm not trying to overhype like I did with the Chan Eagles. <laughs> but when I remember the likes of Rashida Rojiba Day, when I remember the likes of uh, Onomenu and uh, the other 18 players that they've been called upon to represent uh, Nigeria, and not forgetting uh, the uh, ladies who just featured at the Costa Rica on the 20 uh, FIFA Women's World Cup, the likes of um, Esther Onyenezide, who scored the most goals for the Falconets, and not forgetting the captain, Tosin Demian, and as well as uh, Rafiat Imuran, I think it's, it's a great inclusion, which is 
really developing football here in the local scene, especially Nigerian Women's Football League, which the date has been slated to, the league has been slated to start on the 12th of October. So the inclusion of this eight home base players, uh, or four home base players, and of course, four technical team uh, from the home base point of view, is certainly going to help Nigerian football here in the grassroots. So I'm really much excited about the ladies, and uh, I hope they can get the much needed result in the United States of America. But I must really stand on my word that the value of this particular encounter is in the workout of the players, is in the making sure that these players can play together when the big tournament comes around. So even if I, we I do understand, on... but uh, I, I'm just trying to say that paraventure, you know, uh, when you look at the fixture and when it's time to play the actual game, you know the United States team is a formidable one. They have won this mm -hmm. game several times, 11 times champions if you look at the records. Uh, so I I'm just saying that at the friendly level, do you think that we stand a chance? You, you need to look at the players. Uh, they are physically very strong. Yes, and, and I, I, I they believe look On the big side. Yeah, I believe that the Super, uh, Super Falcons actually stand a chance against the United States of America. They're not so great any longer. Yeah, they're not. I don't think they are so powerful any longer, the United States. I mean, th these days you see the countries like the Netherlands, English side. I think the English women are even more powerful than the United States women. And not forgetting the Dutch ladies are also very great. I, I think the Super Falcons stand a chance if they just have a belief if they're just mentally focused in this particular game, they can get at least a draw in the United States of America for the doubleheader friendly. Maybe a draw or a win for the two games. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Monday Thomas, for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. It is always great to be here. Do have a fantastic weekend. Mercy. All right, then. And that's the size of the breakfast. Thank you so much for staying with us this morning. It's a beautiful Friday. Uh, morning and uh, we will return on Monday with great conversation and great analysis right here. The news will come your way at 9 o'clock. Please stay with us. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it will be fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Thanks for watching. <laughs>